Hello, my name is Dr. Yanni Nechka. I'm an associate professor at Duquesne University, and today I'm going to be showing you how you can edit and revise a phylogenetic tree so that it looks better visually. So as an example of what you can actually do with the phylogenetic trees to better portray the information you're trying to show, I'm going to use as an example the tree that I work with when I made the video interpreting phylogenetic trees back in September. Now this was a phylogeny from a paper I had done as a postdoc that uh, showed a strong evidence for cryptic species of Kaluga. The tree here is a time tree. We're going to be working with a maximum likelihood tree, right? So where the branches are proportional to substitutions per site. Uh, and I'm going to kind of use this as an example to kind of show what the limitations of, of um, working with trees in Mega are. And one really good program called FigTree, here's a website for it, that is actually much better for actually formatting and editing your trees than Mega, right? Um, I really love FigTree. It's really easy to use. There's a lot of things that you can do with it. Uh, when you get to, to this website, all you have to do is download... Um, the zipped file now of course uh, things are a little bit different if you are uh, using a Mac or a Linux computer uh, you can follow the installations as well with with um, you know well if you're doing Mac you want to do the DMG file and with Linux uh, you'd want to do the .gz <coughs> .tgz if you're using a uh, PC you would just download this file right here the zipped file okay uh, and then what I recommend is um, once you download it, create a folder in your documents uh, that is called software. Okay, so what I did is I made software program here or folder where I like to put all my population and phylogenetic software programs. And then what you want to do is you want to unzip this folder directly into the software folder, right? And so when you unzip it, uh, it creates a new folder with the version number of fig tree. You can open that up, and now you actually have the executable ready to go, right? So you don't have to compile anything. It, the program's right there. Now, one thing about uh, fig tree that's different than a lot of other programs, such as Mega, is that it's a uh, program in Java, right? So if you don't have Java, you also have to go to Java and install Java onto your computer. The best way to open up FigTree is to just go towards the bottom here in your finder and go uh, FigTree, right? It finds that executable, click on it, now FigTree is open, right? Uh, you'll go to File, Open, and then you navigate to your NUIC formatted file. And when, it's, when it opens up, before it, in, before it opens, it asks you to select the name for the values that it's actually going to put on the notes, right? And so when you save that tree file uh, in Mega, it typically keeps the Bootstrap support values with a generic uh, um, generic label called label, all right? So you hit OK. Now, here we're basically looking at the you know very very similar tree there's not much to it either you know it's not not that great visually but you'll notice one difference is that um, the the default in mega is that in a name underscores are not shown they show up as a space right now in in a fig tree which is actually a good thing it actually shows the name exactly how it appears in the file right and so now you can see the underscores between the names right or between the names, or I should say, between the words and the actual name, right? Let me let me show you real quick the difference, right? And if you caught that, is Mega shows a space between those words and the names because it ignores the underscores. Okay, now let's go back to the fig tree. Okay, so how would I make this look nicer? Well, first thing, of course, you want to have a nice, clear font. Right, you want the words to look large, the letters to be large enough that they're easy to read. Right, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the tip labels. Right, so this little box right here. Right now, you can also remove the tip labels, but of course, we want the tip labels on there. 
I'll hit this little triangle to, to drop down all the different options. And I'm going to increase the font size, right? And so I'm going to make the font, uh, you know, pretty big so it's easy to read. Uh, maybe I'll make it even, uh, it's a little too big, maybe 14 is about good. Now also, the font is a little thin, so to make it even easier to read, I'm going to click on, um, let's see, the uh, font window right here, and I'm going to make it bold so it, so it stands out. Now, I don't like the way that font looks uh, in bold, so I'm going to change it to Arial. Right, and so now, now that's to me is a little bit more visually appealing, right? The way it looks. Now, first thing I'm going to do also is is uh, notice that the way this tree is drawn, it puts all these different lineages sort of on the same horizontal branch, right? And so I'm going to root it with the most distant taxa, which is the Kaluga from the Philippines, right? Because that one diverged first, and then subsequently the Philippines in Java diverged from the ones in Borneo and the Malay Peninsula. And then those were subsequent divergences, right? So I want my tree to reflect that, right? So what I'm going to do now, our um, fig tree makes it really easy to reroute the trees. And all you have to do is you have to select up here the top window. You specify whether with your mouse you want to be selecting the node, the clade, or the taxa, right? And so I want to be um, rooting on a node. So I'm going to highlight this this node right here, the Philippines, and I'm going to press reroute, right? And so notice now it got rerouted. I'm going to resize it a little bit, right? So now this better reflects, again, that divergence because the Kalugo, Philipp the Philippine Kalugos diverged from the ones that are in um, the Sunda land or the area like Borno and those islands, Southeast Asia, long before the divergence within Southeast Asia, okay? And that needs to be reflected in the tree, right? Another thing just looking at this, I want to make my lines a little, dig, a little thicker, right? Is the, those lines are pretty thin. You know, if you're showing it on a, um, you know, if you're going to end it up in a manuscript or presentation, you know, they're going to be kind of hard to read. So we're going to go to the appearance, right? And we're going to increase the line weight uh, just maybe by one, right? So now it's nice and dark. We're going to do the same thing to the scale bar. So we're going to drop down here, increase the font to the scale bar, um, and font size of the scale bar and as well as the the line of the scale bar right so it's already looking better than what it was before right now um, last well not the last thing we also want to show um, the significance of the notes right so we want to we want to show the bootstrap support values right so to do that you would go to the node label so click this node label and hit this drop down uh, drop down triangle again and change the display from the node ages to the label which again is what got imported as the bootstrap support values now these are in fractions instead of percentages and we're going to also increase the font size and we're going to make it um, you know we will uh, make it uh, you know we'll leave it as uh, not bolded right so we're going to leave it as as a normal font because again you know we, we don't want that um, bootstrap support value to immediately overwhelm the other labels in the tree okay but we just want it to be visible so that when someone is is, is thinking oh i wonder what signal the note is they can easily see it right but we don't want it to be the first thing they look at right now uh one thing that people tend to do is sometimes they drop the bootstrap support values, which, you know, for things that are below 30, uh, or I'm sorry, below 50%, or sometimes even below 70%, but you can't, as far as I know, you can easily drop individual node, um, node values or node labels in the fig tree program, so I'm going to leave them as they are, okay? Now, uh, one of the other really good things about um, about um, fig tree is that it allows you to resize the tree really easily, right? So let's say, notice that this tree, there's a lot of space between the names that's not really necessary, right? So we can just move everything in, right? And so now it sort of appears a little bit more like it did in the original paper, right? Because there's not a lot of taxa 
you know, you actually want it to be longer than it is wide, right? If you have a lot of taxa, then you want it opposite. You sort of want it to be taller than it is wide, right? And so fig tree is really nice in terms of letting you, you know, manipulate, you know, how you want it to look. And you can kind of move it around so that it fits the space that you want to, where, where you want to have the figure, right? Uh, another nice thing is you can adjust the length of the root, right? So, you know, having a flat root, you know, it just doesn't look that great because again, it, it you know, by having that longer, slightly longer root, it's a little bit more clear that that's representing the basal split, right? Um, another thing is if you have a really long, you know, really large tree, you can do a fisheye effect um, where you, you could basically space out the tree in a certain place, you know, to highlight certain parts of it. Uh, you can also expand the tree with this, this particular sliding window and you can also do a zoom. Uh, you can also adjust the way it looks. You can make a circle tree, uh, one of these types of trees. I, I think for fig tree, the, the ones I like the best are the, the rectangular formatted trees, right? Now, let's see. What it, the other interesting thing is, is um, if you want it to be even in terms of the, the names that are on the right side, you can do align tip labels, right? And so what this does is it pushes all the tip labels to the right so they're nice and even, easy to read, and then it um, leaves the branches and tips proportional to branch length, right? And it draws a little dashed line to the respective taxes. So this, I sometimes like using this type of formatted uh, tree. It, it, to me, it looks nice and even. Uh, although I, I mean, I'm, I'm more apt to use like the standard, uh, standard phylogeny like that, where they're kind of inset. It's really preference at that point, right? Um, then the last thing that we can do with fig tree that I often like doing is to color the branches and the also, and also the, the taxon names, right? And so we can do this really easily. Uh, where we can, uh, you know, click taxa, and we can um, highlight, you know, when, when you click on that, you can highlight it, and then we can click that little color wheel, and then we can, um, you know, pick what color we want, right? So I'm going to make this one blue. I think you can click on multiple taxa at a time, make that one blue, and at the same time, we're also going to make the this entire... Um, we're going to switch to clade and we're going to make this clade blue, all right? Because it's sort of like, it's the, uh, the Southeast Asian clade, right? However, we want Borneo to be a different color because it's a substantially different area as well, right? So then we're going to go back and we're going to uh, click on the Bornean node. I'm going to make that one green. Okay, and then I'm going to click the taxa. And I'm going to make that uh, name of the Bornean um, species or, or if it's the Bornean sample also green, right? Uh, the last one that I want to change is I'm going to click on node again and, or clade. I guess clade is, probably works better. I'm going to make this one red or, or let's, say, let's use maroon. Uh, and then uh, I'm also going to click the text. And now if you, if you have the clade selected like that, and you switch to taxa, it's going to highlight all those taxa in the clay, so you don't have to click them individually. It's like a little shortcut, okay? Now, one thing is, if you're going back and forth on the colors, uh, one, one tip I have for you is that it's actually kind of hard to remember which, which uh, color rectangle you actually were using, okay? And so make sure that you take a note of the the color numbers of the one you're actually using, especially if you have a tree where there's lots of taxa and you're maybe using, you know, like different shades of the various colors, right? So uh, this way you're using the exact same color and you don't have any kind of weird things looking in there um, where the colors aren't actually matching up, right? They're slightly different, right? So again, if you hold the mouse over the square, it's gonna give you the numbers for that color, right? And so you can just make a note of that, right? 
And so now, I, you know, I really like the way this tree looks, right? Um, it's We're ready to pretty much import it. I'm going to make it just a little bit narrower. So I, I think it's excessively uh, wide. I'm going to bring it in uh, just a hair like that. Um, and the last thing I'm going to do is, is um, change the names, right? So I don't like the fact that there's the underscore there. Like if you're trying to publish it um, in, a, in a paper or at a presentation, a conference, you know, you don't want to have underscores. You don't want things in the labels that don't make it look finished, right? You want it to be looking like you actually put some time and effort into these trees, right? You want to make them look nice. You want to make them look sharp because it can make, it, it makes the difference between, you know, a presentation or a figure that sort of, you know, people are like, oh, you know, okay, it's interesting, but, you know, they really didn't put time into this, um, this figure versus, wow, it's a really nice tree. It looks really good. It's very informative, right? That's what we want when we have someone looking at them. Okay, so, so, um, it make, so it's really easy to edit the, the names on a, um, a fig tree or on the, in the fig tree program. And so you, again, you, you click on taxa, you click on the, the tip that you want to edit and then just hit annotate, okay? And we're going to change the value. Uh, value is what you're going to be annotating with. So basically that's going to replace the name um, when you put that in there, okay? And so we're, I'm going to change this to Colugo um, and I'm going to put, um, I'm going to give, give the, the sample name is going to be there. And then I'm going to do a space. I'm going to do Malay Peninsula. Okay. I'm going to hit okay. And so notice now it got replaced with, with, uh, that, right? So now I'm going to do the same thing for the next one. Okay. So here's our last one. Okay, right. I did. Okay, see, I, I knew I was gonna make a mistake because I was talking. Um, I'm gonna redo this one real quick. Kalugo GVA4 Java. All right, I think they they all look correct. Uh, now, one of the things that I also, you know, don't particularly like about fig tree right because again there, there's there's compromises with these programs right so they all do things really well and some things they don't do very well right and so one of the issues with um with fig tree is where it puts those bootstrap support values as far as i know you can't move the position of these uh in fig tree right so notice one way to so if we have it scrunched like that this one kind of overlaps with the c right and that's you know that, that's just um, not not that good it just doesn't look very good right so we can kind of get around it by expanding the tree a little bit so it's spaced out right so that's one solution right and that, that's that's feasible that looks pretty good uh, but ideally we'd want to you know move the bootstrap support values maybe to the interior so it's so it's not by the name right and if we look at the uh, drop down box um, you know, I don't see an option where we could do that, right? Uh, so just as a tip, there's there's one other way that you could do this, okay? Is you could you could uh, not include the bootstrap support values, right? And then take this image, put it into a PowerPoint slide, and then add in additional things like bootstrap support values, pictures, images, stuff like that. That's how I made this figure for the manuscript, right? So the, a lot of these bars that I added in, you know, the brackets and these names, I did it in in PowerPoint, right? And then I resaved it as an image, right? And I also, you know, was able to put, paste in these pictures. And so I created this panel composite figure, you know, including this bar graph with the divergence times and the Miocene plus and so forth. You know, that was all added, um, you know, on top of the trees in PowerPoint and then export it as a as a uh, as a image, right? Uh, or saved as an image. Okay, there's a couple other things that. Um, well, there. Okay, here's one more that I gotta annotate. So okay, so Colugo. Um, I, I'm gonna actually put Philippine Colugo here. Can also. Um, 
adjust the curvature. So if you don't want complete rectangular tree, right, where you can kind of curve it. So these actually look pretty nice too, right? So if we go all the way down, it changes it to this, this type of tree and we have these nice curves as well. Uh, the last thing that I want to mention is that you can also add points at the nodes, right? So that's referred to as node, node uh, shapes. Right, so it'll basically put a dot on there. So that's also pretty nice. I, I, like, I like when it does that, I like the curve. You know, I think this, this tree looks nice like this. Right, so now we're gonna save it. So before you save it, I wanna mention is if you, you basically are gonna, so fig tree, when you save the, the actual tree, right, it's different from exporting the image, all right? And when you export the image, even if you have this, let's say if you have this highlighted Kalugo here, it's going to actually um, export the image with that highlight, right? So you want to, you know, click outside of it so there's nothing highlighted, right? Now, uh, the if if you want a sharp image file, right, then I would recommend PNG because PNG is sharper than JPEG. And if you want a really, really sharp, um, sharp tree, right, the sharpest is going to be PDF. So for like publication quality, PDF is going to be sharper than PNG. However, in most cases, you know, depending on the resolution, you really won't see a difference between PNG and PDF, right? It kind of depends on the requirements for how sharp it has to be, right? And I'll, I'll export all three uh, just to show, show you. So here's an export as a PNG. Here is exported as a JPEG and it exported as a PDF. Okay, we can even try the SVG. I actually don't usually export as SVG. I'm not sure how sharp that's going to be. Right, and so now I'm going to open them all up and zoom in a bit. Oh, so the SVG is, is actually really sharp as well, right? Now PNG, here's an example of the PNG, right? So notice that if we start zooming in, we start losing a little bit of the resolution, right? So uh, here's a JPEG, right? So notice that JPEG is also a little blurry. And then, uh, the last one I'm gonna open up is the PDF, right? So PDF is really sharp as well, right? So basically the SVG, PDF are the sharpest. Uh, PNG is sharper over JPEG. JPEG is the blurriest, right? So that kind of gives you an idea of the quality. Now, if you wanna save the annotations, right? So let's say you wanna save the format of this tree and then reopen it later, and you want it to keep all the colors and the format and editing that you did, uh, you basically can just save it and now if we open up this uh, Newick file it's not just a Newick file but it's gonna have an open up with notepad notice that it added these Nexus blocks right uh, and these are all formatting blocks that have um, been added by FigTree to tell the program how to do the coloring you know how to do the size of the line and so forth right um, now this one, this format is no longer going to be, you know, be interpretable necessarily by programs that are looking for the basic Newig formatted tree file, right? Like if you try to open it in Mega, you know, I, I don't think it's going to open. Um, let's give it a shot. Let's let's try open this up in Mega. See, failed to load the Newig tree, right? It's because Fig Tree added a lot of other things. So. Before you save this as a, as a file, like the Newick file that you open, right? You actually want to do save as, right? Um, and save as and save it as something like edited tree, right? So I'm going to call this uh, edited tree, right? Uh, now I have a copy of that... Um, you know, of my original Newick format in a different folder, so I can always go back to that one. Uh, but just something to be aware of is that that um, when you save it, Fig Tree is actually going to modify the Newick tree that you that you're working with, and if it does that, it might not open in other programs like Mega, right? 
the other thing that you can do is you can also uh, do, uh, let's see, export trees, right? And so you, you can tree file format, just click on all these different options, include fig tree blocks, save all trees. Well, there's only one tree, so you don't have to check this. Save as currently displayed, right? And then we're gonna give it a, a uh, different name edited, and I put version two, okay? I'm gonna close that. And now I'm gonna close my file and um, we have these two edited fig tree files. So now if we want to go back and open it, we go to fig tree, right? Open up that executable. We're going to go to uh, open and we're going to, I'm going to first open the first one where I just saved the file. Okay. And then I'm going to open the one where we saved it as current. Uh, or you know like what it currently was looking like right which was the second one right so notice the difference okay so when I just hit save right it it actually saved most of the formatting but it didn't save the presentation of the root right uh, now also notice that it um, in in the one on the example on the left it um, puts the branch lengths on the node labels instead of the bootstrap support value. So that's an easy fix. We would just open that. Um, well, actually, that was, uh, for some reason, it, it didn't save the branch links. I'm not sure if I just didn't select it or what, but they're not in there. Notice, right? Um, and then if we go to this one, right, it does have the bootstrap support values. And um, you know we can we can simply reroute it. So if we go to the node, we select the node for the Philippine Kalugo, we reroute, right? So now it looks like the this the, this one, right? Uh, so you know what I end up doing is I usually end up taking the extra step to save the tree in a couple different ways. I will go to File, Save As, all right, and then I will also do File Save Export Tree. Right, and I will click on as many things as I possibly can. I just, you know, let's see if we can do this one more time. So I'll go save as, wait, not save as, I'll do file, export tree. You know, I'll click everything, every option, hit OK. Uh, now let's call this version three. Save it, and now let's go back and open it. Let's see what it does here. Uh, okay, and so now we do have the bootstrap support values there, right? So it looks to me like the way to, to make sure that all your annotations are saved is, you know, you do wanna go to file, save export tree, and then just click all these different options, you know, to make sure that you're not losing some of the formatting that you did, okay? Uh, the very last thing I wanna mention is that uh, you can also, uh, you know, like let's say if you want to uh, you know copy this tree and put it into uh, some PowerPoint slide and then instead of having the names you may basically want to have let's say pictures of the animals that you you know are looking at or maybe you could um, you know put in the the picture of the region where they came from or something like that or, or you can replace it with sequence or you know so just something else that's informative right uh, it's worthwhile to export the tree in two ways. Export it with the name, so just save it like this, and then also save it without the tip labels. So to summarize, I wanted to show the two different trees that uh, we were working with, or I should say versions of the same tree. So to the left, we have the tree that I uh, had saved from Mega earlier. Now this is again the basic tree and here to the right is the fig tree that has all the annotations and the formatting, right? And so again, in fig tree, to summarize, you can do a lot more richer annotations and, and um, changing in terms of style to make your tree look more interesting and to better pass on the information that you want to highlight in your phylogenies. So I hope that you found this video useful and I'm going to try to post additional videos on the different phylogenetic methods in the near future. Thank you for your attention.